All right, good to spend a few minutes with LSU basketball head coach Will Wade ahead of the NBA draft. Coach, thanks for your time this morning. Um, it's pretty pretty exciting time for you, I imagine, with, with several guys that have a chance to extend their careers to the next level. Um, I, I'll start with, start with Camp Thomas because um, I was just reading an article that Mark Spears did for the Undefeated, and he, he, he's a lottery pick. He's, um, he, he's going to go pretty early. You'll be up there um, with him. I, Let's, let's go back to the beginning of your relationship with him. Um, I, I was reading the Mark Spears story, and he talked about, obviously, Cam's relationship with his mom. Um, and I want to ask you about that. But before that, when you first started recruiting him and you first started evaluating him, what quality stood out as a guy that uh, – making him a guy that could be in this position one day, a guy that would be a lottery pick? I mean, the one – the, the, the one thing that stood out the most was his ability to draw fouls. Like, I watched him in high school. You watch him in, in AAU. Like, he, he could draw fouls. And so anybody th – that translates no matter the level. And so I knew that, you know, I mean, yet last year, any game when we got off the bus, we were pretty much up eight to nothing because he was going to take eight free throws or eight or nine free throws and he was going to make, you know, eight out of nine or seven out of eight. And so you have a lead every time every time you have him just because of – that's just a huge, huge weapon. And he didn't get a bunch of calls on jump shots in college that he'll get in the NBA just with the rules being different. So he's going to be even more of a weapon drawing fouls in the, uh, in the NBA than he, than he was in college. And so just his ability to draw fouls, his ability to score, his ability to manufacture points, uh, he, did it at, he did it at every level. There, there was a quote in this story from you um, where you're talking about his mom and, and recruiting his mom as hard as, as you recruited him. And just the, the way that she has that military approach is, is having been in the army. And I'm curious that first meeting, like what were your expectations going into that first meeting with, with Cam and his mom? And then when you walked away from it, what was your, your takeaway from it? Well, I mean, she, she's just very, she's very punctual. Um, you know, she, she she expects you to you know to be on time and to and to, and to do what you do what you want to do and 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 you know she's just all into her son. She wants what's best for her son, and she's going to hold you accountable for what you say you're going to do. I've never been so scared recruiting a kid. Um, we we it was his birthday, and so we had set up where we were going to. He had played the night before at Oak Hill, and um, it was a Sunday, and we. Uh, we set up a flight, me and Coach Armstrong, to go meet uh, Cam, his mom, and his sister for his birthday. And so we were going to this – they were staying at a Hampton – I'll never forget it, man. They were staying at a Hampton Inn in Galax, Virginia. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. Across the street from the Hampton Inn, there's a Walmart and there's an Applebee's. And so we were going to meet at the Applebee's. We, we had another official visit that day. And so we were, I dropped the kid off at the airport that morning. And then I drove to the other side of the airport to get on the school plane to go. We get there and the pilots look at me and say, there's fog at the, at, at the airport. So we can't get into the thing. So I'm, I'm like freaking out, but he's like, there's another airport in North Carolina. We are flying somewhere by Galax, but there's another airport. It's right on the border with North Carolina. There's another airport somewhere in North Carolina. It's about 35 minutes away that we can, um, you know, that we can, uh, that we can get into. I'm like, all right, we'll go. Well, we don't have a rental car there. We have nothing. So I'm just like, we'll just get the airport always has a car. So I'm like, all right, we'll just get the car and, and we'll, um, you know, we'll drive to Galax and figure this out. I'm sitting there thinking if we're late, like this recruitment is over. <laughs> so we land and then the airport car, I swear to you, you can ask coach Armstrong. It was a, it was a Chevy Impala, like 1995 Chevy Impala. The doors, I mean, the, the thing barely started. There was a screwdriver in the um, in the in the ignition, that's how it's for the gear shift. It was a screwdriver, so we drive this rickety thing up the interstate like 40 minutes to Galax, and I call her on the way. I'm like, look, the plane got diverted. Blah 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 blah. She was joking with me the other day about this. She 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 was. We were joking the other day. She goes, we've come a long way since you brought that POS to Applebee's, didn't we? And she was <laughs> sitting in the parking lot waiting for us, laughing at us in the car and and then i kind of i kind of felt like all right we kind of broke the barrier she knows how serious we are she knows that we'll do anything to get her son and uh and you know we were we were we actually made it on time and she appreciated the effort and she she still 
she sat out there as we were going back and joked with us about the car and making sure the thing would shift into gear and she was looking at it it was it was it was pretty funny but um it's one of those things in recruiting you got to improvise and, and and make it happen we had to pick up food for the pilots on the way back because we took their car they usually take to get the food but um it was uh it was a wild recruiting trip but i think that's where we won her over is she do then like look these guys will do you know do anything to get my son they're going to take care of my son they're going to look after him and you know that that he's this important to them that they're willing to be you know as, as resource, resourceful as they can be and i'm just glad the car made it back and forth down the interstate without breaking down <laughs> well your hustle paid off uh, hopefully your flight into new york on thursday is uh is a little bit smoother than that one you don't have to take a a rickety car to the draft. How exciting is that to, to get to go experience that um, for you personally? But I, I know your focus is more on Cam and his family and getting to experience that as well. Yeah, I'm excited for Cam. I'm excited for Leslie. Excited for Shanice. Um, I'm, I'm I'm really just excited for those guys. And and you know I'll just be there. Uh, I'll just be there for for support. I appreciate them inviting me and asking me to go. Nelson and and, and Vernon are going with me. Um, and so you know uh, it'll be uh, be a fun uh, be a fun night on Thursday night for sure. But just really excited for him. Anytime you can watch your guys, uh, you know, reach their goals, reach their dreams, that's uh, that, that, that's exciting as a coach. I remember you saying this about Skyler last year, um, that his game almost might translate better to the NBA because of the spacing. Cam, do you, do you have that same sense with Cam? I mean, not that his his game translated pretty well to the college level too, but. Um, yeah, yeah, I've told every team, I mean, shoot, he's gonna, you know, he's going to get you 15 points. <laughs> Yep. It's just by showing up. I mean, no, I think, I, like I said, I think the, the, the rules in the NBA allow him to finish a little bit better at the rim with the defensive three seconds. I think the, he'll, get call, he'll get the calls on those jump shots that he didn't get in college. Like, those are fouls. You watch what Trey Young and some of those guys do, drawing fouls. He can do all that stuff. Um, and so, you know, I, I think there's a lot of things that, that translate even better uh, to the next level than they did in college. Moving on to other guys that are um, up up for the draft this year, and I want to talk about Javante Smart. I was reading a, a story yesterday that he had gone to Toronto and set some record um, for for like shooting three pointers uh, in their in their shooting draft. He actually set it in two. He set it in Toronto and he set it in Chicago. He set it in two different. Um, he set it in two different uh, two different cities and two different organizations. So, you know, he's just been working extremely hard. He's been training extremely hard. He's got a lot of momentum. I, I took uh, three calls on him yesterday from, from different teams, um, specifically, you know, on him. So I think he's got a lot of momentum heading into the, you know, heading into the draft here. He's just been a workout warrior. He's worked out for, I mean, he's done, he's been, him and, he, him and Trendon, every day I text them, you know, they're in a different city, they're working out, they're doing this, they're doing that. And so, you know, they've, they've done everything they can to, to, to position themselves. And Javante's worked, uh, worked so hard and, uh, you know, he's shooting the ball extremely, extremely well, just like we know he can. I've uh, been very, very proud of him. And, and you know, he's, he's, he's figuring it out and, and finding a way to make it happen. Seems like just yesterday he had committed to you. I remember that day that he committed. I was hosting a radio show, and it felt like a big, momentous um, thing. You had just gotten hired, and um, it, it felt like the momentum was going. And then, obviously, he comes up with the phrase, boot up, and, and, and really kind of helps you – um, I know he wasn't here that first season, but kind of get this thing started here at LSU. I know it's still a little bit early to the back end of his career um, at LSU, but what do you think his impact is going to be here for a long time? I mean, I hear from fans all the time how much they just love Javante, the competitiveness he displayed, the way he improved his last year. What do you think his impact is going to be at this place? He's, he was blue collar. You know, he worked extremely hard. He was an unbelievable leader and team player. And like you said, man, I mean, he believed in us when there wasn't a whole lot to believe in. And, uh, you know, we're forever, forever grateful for that. I mean, he believed in us when there wasn't a whole lot to believe in. And uh, trending came to us when we were coming out, when I was coming off the suspension and he had tons of options. Like those two kids, man, they, they really have, 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 have um, moved our program, moved our program forward. And, um, you know, I, I tell Javante all the time, I love him. And, and you know, he's, do, he's done a ton. He sacrificed a lot for our team, sacrificed a lot for our program. He absolutely loves LSU. He loves Baton Rouge. He loves Louisiana. And, uh, you know, like you said, the boot up. Uh, he's brought just a lot of, a lot of things competitively uh, to our, uh, you know, to our program. And it's not easy what he did to play college ball in the same city you played high school ball in, to be the most decorated player in the state. 
and come here and, and, and do what he did and, and have the success that he had. So uh, unbelievably, uh, unbelievably proud of him and, and excited to, to, to follow his, his, his career as it moves forward. You mentioned Trenton Watford. He's a guy that after his freshman season, along with Javante and a couple other guys, had the opportunity to look at the next level, um, decided to come back, improve, work on his game. Felt like at the end of the season, he was playing his best basketball. And, and you talked about momentum with Javante, um, but you mentioned Trendon as well. What kind of feedback are, are you giving teams and getting from teams about Trendon and his fit at the next level? Because of his, his diverse skill set, he feels like, you know, 10 years ago, being a tweener was a bad thing in the NBA. Um, and not that he's a tweener necessarily, but um, now it's called versatility, right? Being able to play multiple positions. What, what are you hearing uh, about him and, and the feedback you're giving teams as well? Yeah, I mean, there's teams that like trending at the five in the NBA uh, with the way the NBA's with the way the NBA's playing, and you know, just to have somebody that's that tall and that long and that's a that, that, that's a playmaker um, is is extremely important. And um, you know, I think there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of intrigue with him. I've actually got a call with with his agent a little bit later on, and and we were texting earlier this week about some things. And so, um, you know, he's just you know he's he, he's worked extremely hard. He's done everything he can. He shot it well in the workouts. I've told everybody, that, you know, that's one of the things I tell him, guys. He's a he's a much better shooter than his numbers would show. And uh, I'm really proud of how he shot it in the workouts and how hard he's worked. He's really reshaped his body. He looks totally different. He came back. He spent a couple days with us before his workout in New Orleans with the Pelicans. And uh, he just looked uh, – he, he looked tremendous. And so just very, very proud of him, very, very um, pleased. And I, th I think he's got um, – I think he's got some um, – some good things going into uh, going into Thursday night. One more for you, Will. I was looking at um, some draft analysis, and I think one of the draft analysts had a kind of a chart of all the teams that have had players drafted over the last few years. And I guess it was surprising to me because I grew up around here and uh, at a time when LSU wasn't putting a ton of guys in the NBA, but LSU was pretty high on that list. You've got guys like um, I know Nas didn't get picked, but he's succeeding there. Tremont um, got a second round pick. Skyler last year um how good has it been to see those guys come through here i mean even a guy that get, didn't get picked but a guy that's been on my mind lately do off reef um shining with, with the australian national team at the olympics how good has it been to see those guys that you coached come through here and have some success at the next level nba or or whatever uh, wherever they end up oh it's been great i follow wap overseas uh reed vial sends me all the updates every day um so we follow wap and reed are really close they were roommates and so yeah. He worked for us the last couple of years, worked with us the last couple of years. And so, um, you know, been following WAP. I stayed up and watched one of his Olympic games the other night at like 3.40 in the morning. But, uh, you know, proud of him, proud of all those guys. Aaron Epps just played in the TBT uh, this past weekend and, or this past week. They played last night, actually. And, uh, you know, just, just having those guys, having Skyler back. I got to spend a bunch of time with Skyler. Uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, he's going to – I'm going to try to go out to Summer League in August so I can see, you know, Skyler, Trey, um, you know, the three guys we just spoke about, they'll all probably be in summer league. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's exciting. That's what you want. And I really like that, that, you know, Nas was back for, for, for a week and a half or so and, and spent some time with our players. It's good just to have those guys around to talk to our players, spend time with our players. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, that's what you want as a program. You want, you want guys to have such a great experience that they want to come back, want to spend time around your team, want to spend time around your staff and, um, you know, do their workouts and things here. And, and that's what we, uh, you know, that's what we have right now. And I, th I think that speaks volumes to our assistants and our staff and, um, and, and the support people around, uh, around our program. So uh, we're getting there. Uh, Thursday would be a great night to have a, have, have a first round pick uh, for sure. And, and, and we're getting there. We're making progress. We've got, we've got more progress to make. But, you know, at the end of the day, our job, I tell, tell kids this in recruiting, our job is to be dream makers. You know, whatever your dream is, you want to get to the next level, like it's our job to work with you to, 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 to make that happen. And, um, you know, that's what all those examples are, is guys, we've, we've um, you know, we, we, we've, we, we've been a small step on their, um, on their path to, uh, to making it happen. We don't make the pros now. They make themselves. We just give them the, uh, we just give them the structure. We just give them the, the roadmap. Um, to uh, to do it. I tell them all the time, I'm going to give you the roadmap. Just don't drive the car in the ditch. Just keep it between the lanes, keep it between the lines, and, and, we'll, be, uh, and we'll be good. Uh, don't put it in the ditch. The guys always joke with me about that. They'll tell me, man, I, I, I turned that thing in the ditch today. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we got to get a tow truck, get that thing out, get it back on the road. Uh, but, uh, you know, just, just, uh, 
just stick to the plan, stick to the roadmap. And, and these are talented, talented kids we get. And they're, they, they've been working for a long, long time. And we're happy to be a small step in that process. Well, as long as the car doesn't have a screwdriver for a gear shift, I think they'll be okay to keep it out of the ditch. Way to tie that together, Cody. That's why you're a professional, man. I like it. That's, that's what we do over here. All right, Will, appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.